Long time no see. Hey, I'm Garnet, and if you guys are new to this channel, I'm a semi-professional game developer based in Sydney, Australia. If you have kept up with the channel, you'll know that I've been working on two games, Thorn and Pixel Fortress, and I've been slowly documenting my progress on both of these games. Now rest assured, I have been working on these projects, but there are a couple of other things that I've been working on in the last few weeks that I can't discuss just yet, but I will be making videos on them as time goes on. Now today's video will be on Pixel Fortress as I've just implemented something kind of cool and I want to give you guys a quick update on it. So let's jump into it. One key element that I wanted to make unique about Pixel Fortress was that the gaming experience will be different each time due to the fact that there will always be a different map layout. So the first thing that I actually built in the game was a working path algorithm so there is a process from point A to point B in a completely randomized way. However, there was a limitation to this algorithm and that comes in the fact that although it is completely random with a few requisites such as minimum or maximum consecutive paths, it's still possible that some of the map designs wouldn't really be that fun, or at least in my opinion wouldn't be that fun. Now, since writing this algorithm, I wanted a way to seed the generations so that only the more interesting maps would be usable for the player, so that's exactly what I started working on. Now I'm sure you all know what seeds are in games, but to briefly explain, with probably the most applicable example being Minecraft. Minecraft is known for the seeds in the game, and they're essentially a way to control the seemingly random generation, so that as long as a certain seed is entered, it will always output the same result. So, how did I go about implementing this in my game? Well, I pretty much used this principle. I had two variables, which was C-sharp's random property, and an int variable, which is my seed. Before the random instance is ever called, I created the instance of the class and passed through the seed variable, ensuring that the seed was a random number to begin with. So every time I used random, which in the case of my path generation was for changing directions, I would use the random.next instance instead of unity's random.range. And since it had a specific seed, it will always output the same generation. Now this is extremely beneficial for being able to reuse maps, which is exactly what I intended on doing. However, I had to create a way to export the seed, and the first thing I came up with was actually creating a tool that I could manually export the seed at the click of a button, but that proved to be extremely time consuming as it meant that I had to keep regenerating the algorithm myself, look at the path, and make the judgement of whether or not I liked the generation. So, what I came up with instead was I modified the map generation script and included a variable that counts how many paths get created per generation. If the count was above a certain amount, it would call a different script which saves the seeds that was generated and then it would remake the map. This was then called until I decided to stop the program, but the end product looks like this. Now inside of the map handler script as well, I've included a isCeeder variable, and if I set this to true, essentially what that is checking is to see if the game needs to record the seeds that it's finding. I want to make a note here as well, inside of the map data text file here, it's up to line 1846. Now since the data is being recorded on real time, we'll be able to see that number increase as the generations are being created. So it's generating very fast and anytime there's a successful map, it's passing the seed data, which you can see here as well, updating quite regularly, into this file here. So while the map is just continuously being generated, Every time the number of paths have passed the minimum amount, the seed will get stored. At the moment, I'm storing it in a JSON file, which is giga brain moment. But don't worry, I am working on getting this into a CSV file instead, because a 2000 line JSON just isn't right. Now, when it comes to loading a map, at the moment I just reverse the process, and the seed that was randomized before is now selecting a random number from the existing pool of seeds and I know without a doubt that these maps have a path count that would make the game hopefully interesting and fun to play. Now technically it's completely possible that two seeds are going to be exactly the same, but the odds of that happening are just so low that it's not something that I'm too bothered with right now. Now I know that this was a bit of a smaller update and I do plan on making a tutorial on exactly how I've implemented this shortly, but I just thought that since I've got it working, I should make a quick video keep you guys posted. Now if you guys have made it this far in the video, as always I really appreciate the support. 
I am trying to pump out regular videos, but with what I've been busy with for the last month or so, I've had to sort of figure out where my priorities are and I've had to hold off on creating content for a little bit. Now, that being said, I should be back on track very shortly. So if you want to keep up to date with the latest content, devlogs and tutorials, make sure you subscribe and definitely leave a comment down below anything that you guys want to see me working on as well, because I'd love to hear you guys' suggestions. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys all very soon. Take care.